Well, hello, 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 and a big warm welcome to the Meeple Minded News Shed for this week's tabletop gaming news. My name is Jason, stepping in for our newsman, Paul, which, as I'm sure regulars will have noticed, has been uh, notably absent these past few weeks. But rest assured, Paul has not left the team here at the Meeple Minded HQ, but I will elaborate a little bit more at the end of this show. But for now, let's dive in to this week's news. Okie dokie, guys. So first up this week, AI has been a topic of some hot debate in recent months, with some people denouncing all companies that choose to use AI-generated artwork and ideas. But this game is using AI, but in a different way. A new version of the classic board game Pictionary will see players drawing for an AI program. Classic Pictionary, of course, is a game where players draw clues to the best of their abilities in a short amount of time to help other players guess various words, with each player uh, also having a series of words that they will gain points for. And whichever player at the end of the game has the most points is declared the winner. In this new version of Pictionary, however, the guessing part of the game is to be replaced by an app-driven program. So players will take it in turns to draw their words for an artificial intelligence program to then guess. Players are said to be able to experience the classic party board game Pictionary as a solo game without the need for other players. There is also said to be a or to be challenge modes for players to attempt, such as drawing with their eyes closed or even with no hands. With the new game set to cost players around the $25, £25 mark, and having a release date of later this week, in fact, of October the 2nd, it will be interesting to see just how well this idea transposes onto the tabletop. But uh, really, what are your guys' thoughts on AI used within games? Is, is this a better use of AI than, say, artwork or ideas? Let us know. We, we'll be really interested to know it's a very controversial topic is is ai within in board games at the moment next up today uh is food chain magnate a deep complex simulation of restaurant franchise management it is a game that whilst deemed by many to be perfection in board game design unfortunately it also has a reputation as being pretty dull aesthetically but fear not players lucky that games may have some good news heading your way as they have announced a new partnership with Splotter, which is the original publisher, to release a brand new special edition of the game, and it's going to be hitting the game found crowdfunding platform later this year. Lucky Duck's chief of online channels said, Food Chain Magnate is one of those grail games that so many people strive to play because of the incredible strategic tabletop experience it offers. We are exceptionally excited to be able to publish a new edition of the game that stays true to the original mechanics while introducing a fresh new visual style and components to enhance the presence on players' tables. The overhauling of the game is said to be less about changing the much-loved rules but instead giving it a new lick of paint and improving its visuals and components including the addition of miniatures and new milestone tracker stored in a revised box inlay. The special edition will also bundle in the game's 2019 expansion, the catch-up mechanism, and other ideas comprised of a series of optional modules that introduce coffee shops, new foods such as sushi and noodles, and additional districts among other gameplay elements. While also expanding its play account to a maximum of six. The expansion's contents will also see a similar makeover to the base game. The downside, however, guys, there is a downside. The downside to this news is that Lucky Duck has confirmed that while the Game Found campaign is set to go live on November 14th, those of us wishing to get the game will have limited time to do so, as this game currently has zero plans to go to retail following its successful crowdfunding campaign. However, silver lining here, guys, the original publisher Splotter has in the meantime reopened orders for another print run of the original game, which will hopefully be arriving early next 
year. So those fans of you or fans out there of Fuche Magnate, I know there's a fair few of them. I've not personally played it yet. I really want to. I'm probably going to back this campaign. But uh, yeah, if you are wanting this upgraded version, it will only be on crowdfunding, not going to retail. Two big news stories for this week that I really wanted to cover. So over to the BGG hotness now. For those of you unaware, the hotness is a list of games currently being searched and talked about on Board Game Geek. And at the time of the recording, the hottest games are at number five, Printing Press. Printing Press is a medium weight abstract strategy game from publisher Grana. It has players trying to impeccably fulfill customer orders and bring renown to your printing workshop over the course of just three rounds. It is time to get ready for a rapid, dynamic gameplay experience infused with a healthy dose of tactical decision-making and astute planning. In at number four, sees the tabletop giants Awaken Realms back in the top five with their newest title, Dragon Eclipse, currently over on GameFound. In Dragon Eclipse, players enter a magical world of mythical beasts and ancient dragons. This exciting new board game has players uncovering the secrets of the eclipse that changed everything and discovering the dangerous and treacherous world that awaits you. In at number three, it's time for me to break out my name butchering because at number three, we have Kutna Hora by Czech Games Edition. Join other ambitious guild leaders in mining and developing the famous City of Silver during its period of rapid economical growth and expansion in the 14th century. From the first discovery of silver near the Cisterian Monastery to the construction of Kutnahora. Kutnahora, the City of Silver, is a historical city-building Euro game for two to four players that features a real-life supply and demand experience in which every action you take has an impact on the game's dynamic economic systems. In at number two, I must admit when I first saw this one, I was immediately taken back to my holidays in the US and grabbing a White Castle burger, but that is not the theme of publisher Devere Games' The White Castle. In The White Castle, players will control a clan in order to score more victory points than the rest. To do so, they must amass influence in a court manage resources boldly, and place their workers in the right place at the right time. To explore the most imposing fortress in modern Japan, Himeji Castle. Again, I butcher names left, right, and center, so exp I I'm guessing I've pronounced that wrong. My apologies. And finally, at number one, we are heading back to 2016 for another dash of the Orient, as number one is Yokohama. In Yokohama, each player is a merchant of the Magi period. Again, apologies if I butcher that. Trying to gain fame from a successful business. So guys, that's it for the news this week. Yeah, it's been a very short edition of the news. I did want to try and get something out today because I had a, a spare sort of half an hour uh, before I actually have a game night in the next uh, half an hour or so. So I've just about got enough time to get this on the computer, edit a few little bits on it. But uh, yeah. But very quickly, before I do sign off, I mentioned at the start that uh, I was going to talk at the end of the show about what's been going on. Because, yeah, it is obvious to all of our regulars that the new show especially has been somewhat patchy recently. And this is because our wonderful newsman, Paul, has been suffering a fair bit with some niggling health problems. And this, of course, has caused him to be unable to record as of late. Um, despite his best efforts, he has been trying every single week and has been apologising every single week that he's not been able to do it. However, I'm sure all of you will agree with me that agree with me in saying that his personal health is far, far more important than recording the show and, and stuff like that. Uh, I would rather him have the time to rest, sort his health out, and come back stronger than ever. But of course, the the, the downside to that is, unfortunately, with my current work schedule. I'm not going to be able to pick up the, the new show myself. And so for the time being, we have taken the tough decision 
to suspend the weekly news show until such times that Paul feels fit and well enough to resume his role as the news uh, news reader for us here at the Meeple Minded, or I can perform some kind of miracle to free up some time within my week to be able to record the show myself. But whatever that might be, the key thing here is that I'd like all of you to join me in in wishing Paul all the best in his recovery and obviously getting his health back on track. It is far more to, important to me to ensure that Paul is, is healthy and more importantly that we can game together soon because obviously that's the other thing. He's not been able to come out and game. It's been a while since I've managed to see Paul, but it's, you know, health is far more important to me. This is not a job for us. At the end of the day, we do this for passion. So yeah, obviously, if you want to, please do send Paul your well wishes. Uh, but he has not gone. He is still with us. He's uh, still doing things behind the scenes here at The Meeple Minded. But for now, the weekly news show is going to be suspended. So we're going to go back to just one episode a week, which will be with myself and James. Uh, but in, until then, guys... Get well, Paul. We really do miss you. We'd love to have you back very, very soon, but do not come back until you are ready and fit to do so because your health is far more important to us and all of us. I think I speak for the listeners as well on that one. So there we go, guys. That's it from me. Have a great week. I will be back with you on Tuesday for another episode of The Meeple Minded with my good friend James. But just remember, going forward, there will be no more releases on a Thursday until we find some way of being able to get a episode of the news out to you. But until then, thank you very much for joining me. I will speak to you next week. Have a good one. Goodbye.